Uh, oh, here we go. So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, once again tonight, it is really about students teaching teachers, <laughs> which is cool. Marina Lombardo is with us here. Marina, did you want to say hello and introduce yourself briefly? Marina. Hi, um, I'm Marina, and I am a third grade general education teacher, so I teach all the subjects, and um, I am working on how to include opportunities for my students to learn more about artificial intelligence and how they can use it to help them grow in different ways. And the, I don't know if you heard that, um, Morgan and Charlie, but did it, if your name's right, I do, yes. Um, but uh, she, Marina is a uh, third grade teacher, so she's bringing AI to that level which is pretty cool stuff. Charlie, do you want to introduce yourself? Are you, are you going to say hello at least? Hello, Charlie. <laughs> okay. Maybe not. Okay. Aditya, introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Aditya. I'm a eighth grader at William Mann in middle school. Um, and I've been using AI in a variety of ways, including in my writing and researching for things such as my uh, prepping for preparations for uh, debate tournaments that I participate in because I'm on the school debate team. And tomorrow, Aditya, you're presenting um, at a workshop. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna kind of see what you've been what you're what you're gonna present there briefly. So you're gonna share that with us. Morgan, welcome. Did you know what to expect here tonight, Morgan, or are you okay? <laughs> welcome. Introduce yourself first. Okay, so hi, my name is Morgan. I'm a student at SLA Bieber. I just started using AI in my writing this year in my English class. Yeah. That was the first time you used it with your writing? Yes, because, well, my teachers, uh, especially my engineering teacher, introduced us to it back in 11th grade. But for some reason, like, I couldn't use ChatGPT because my email, they just wouldn't let me create an account. So I was like, oh, maybe that's a sign. I don't need to be using AI. But now with now comment, I'm finally able to use it as a tool. Cool, cool. Jamela, feel free to um, open your mic and say hello and uh, turn your camera on. Um, Morgan, we'll get back to you. Um, I, I wanna jump in and uh, ask Aditya to share his screen and keep it brief, Aditya, but um, you you told me right before we started recording that you're going to first present the four things you've done this yeah. semester. Do you want to leap into that? So share your screen and and we'll give you feedback. So uh, in this yeah, advanced You're class, not sharing yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm just... Oh, okay, you're just talking while it's coming. Yeah. Uh, in Mr. Ronsky's class, we've used artificial intelligence in, I would say, four major product projects. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first one. So the first one is in the fall, we wrote these 100-word narratives. And some of us, including me, submitted these to the New York Times 100-word competition. Uh, what we didn't, sub we didn't submit the edited version uh, to the contest, the one with the AI edits, but we did edit it afterwards. And we got on a uh, call with the people who work in that particular department that ran the competition in uh, in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a hundred word piece about uh, a friend I had in uh, six, seventh, sixth grade, or at least I thought at the time that he was my friend. Uh, that proved to later be false. We had a dramatic falling out at the end of the year. Uh, but on the bright side, it gave me this uh, beautiful piece. So. I, I have the original version. Uh, I, ha uh, I, I can read it to you. This is what I submitted to the New York Times. I had a friend. Emphasis on had. I thought we were inseparable, and I wasn't shy about it. I'm not like that. Then one day, everything changed. It started like every other. Then someone tried to stress my friendships. Are you friends with him? You know he doesn't think that. I, of course, said we are. He would never. Then something changed. He said he wasn't my friend. That stabbed me. While the real will, will heal, an emotional wound won't. I thought, maybe, I'd done something wrong. But I realized he was wrong. I gave him everything, he gave me nothing. 
I haven't read, read this piece in a while, actually. Um, so Thanks artificial intelligence. Go ahead. Yeah. So we put it in youth. Uh, so this, and for this particular piece, we didn't use NowComment. We used another uh, soft. We used another website called Youth Voices, which works. I would say in a Morgan's similar... been Morgan's been there too, so she knows what you're talking about. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it works in a similar-ish way, uh, where we create thinking partners to help uh, expand our writing and our thinking. So uh, it gave me a few things. So, for example, uh, way the first sentence, second sentence, and it kind of and, and based on previous winners of the hundred word essay, it figured out which were the most important parts, the three most important uh, parts that I could apply to my piece. So em emotional resonance, clarity and consciousness, and dynamic language. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. That, she, that the AI, that artificial intelligence said I could use to improve my piece. Uh, and it gave me suggestions for ways to improve my piece. And I have my reactions that I wrote down back when I first started using I here. And at that time, and I still feel that to some extent, this is my con this is what I feel about AI, is that it gave me some interesting points. It gave me some points that weren't as useful, but I think running it through artificial intelligence helped me expand and think of the ways where I, even when I submitted this, I knew there were points in there that I didn't feel as strong, but at the time I couldn't find the words to say them. But artificial intelligence greatly helped me figure that out. So I revised it with artificial intelligence as edits in mind. So I can read the. Sure, uh, go for it. Yeah. And then stop and we'll hear if there's any yeah. feedback to give to you. Yeah. Uh, so I had a friend, emphasis on had. I thought we were inseparable. I wasn't sorry about that. I'm not like that. Then one day stood out amongst the ordinary. Then someone tried to annihilate my friendship. Are you friends with him? You know, he doesn't think that. I, of course, said we are. He would never. Then something changed. He declared our cherished friendship void. That pierced my heart. While a real, real wound will heal, an emotional wound, wound won't. I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. I realized he was wrong. I gave him everything. He gave me nothing. And you see over here is where most of that AI edited feed, uh, the AI feed came in. Uh, but the thing over here is, especially as I was beginning to use AI, I felt like I, I, now that I look back on it, I realize you can kind of see which parts were my writing and which parts weren't. And I feel like it kind of took away, I figured to say, my voice. So I feel mm -hmm. like that's something that everybody kind of needs to learn when they learn about AI is that well, it's one thing to use AI to improve your writing. We have to make sure that who you are as a person still shines through as your piece, just like it did in the original. Cool, cool. Morgan, you have any reactions to all that? And welcome, Bob. We we are student heavy tonight. Morgan is from um, Ms. Breeze's uh, Ms. Breeze, Ms. Ms. Bentham's class, Breeze Bentham, um, in <laughs> Philadelphia. And um, Aditya, I think you know from um, New Jersey from Williams. And Bob Montgomery is a educational leader in California. Let's put it there. Okay, nice, nice. Morgan, quick thoughts about what you just what. Aditya just put out there because you've done something similar. Yeah, I have. And I relate to using AI, especially when I struggle to find the words for my writing, because sometimes when I'm writing off the top of my head, I find myself using a lot of the same like adjectives and everything. And sometimes AI is kind of like a little thesaurus I can use to expand my ideas and such. So I relate in that aspect and just figuring out how to use the other thinking partners. I'm learning on how I can use the specific ones to find certain things to expand my writing. Cause I know the one I did like the most was the they say that helped me a lot with writing my traffic jam opinion piece. As far as like what more I could add to my writing to make it more enriching and everything like that. Very cool. Um, uh, Aditya, do you want to say more? Um, the I don't I don't know if you can. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. Uh, I think there's like the book thought journal and the say something. Where I think I'm gonna probably skip the say something because I didn't do too much with that. And I feel okay. like it's very similar. So I kind of want to show all the different aspects of how you can use AI. 
So I'm going to kind of just skip forward to uh, the book thought journal mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, book thought journal. Where is it? There it is. So uh, just a quick background. So uh, in, in Mr. Dronsky's class, we uh, whenever we read a book, we uh, write a, a, a short like a paragraph or two about what how our writing is making us think. Occasionally, it's like a sentence or two, but occasionally we'll expand on that sentence with uh, what we feel. So I was reading a book, uh, Elon Musk by, I don't remember the author, I think it was Ashley Vance. Uh, it was basically an, a biography <laughs> in his life. And I basically copied in my entire journal up to that point. Uh, and you, you copied it into the discussion place mm -hmm. on now coming. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I used two different uh, thinking partners to in this. So I first used a supportive English teacher mentor. And Oh, where was it? I think I actually have the reactions to that particular partner on a separate doc. But the one that I remember most, and I think the one that mm -hmm. was most important, was uh, the one that Mr. Dronsky created, uh, Joe's Inquiry Partner, which is uh, um, it basically what we did is we called it analyzing the roots and branches or all the different ideas in the piece. So it would take like a little section of my writing kind of pull out the key ideas and figure out ways for me to expand that in a new direction, which I found very personally, uh, I personally found interesting. And uh, so it came up with three topics. And then with those few topics, also came up with some out of the box suggestions for exploration. Uh, and this Did was- Did you actually really do those explorations or are you still going to do them or what? I really, ha we started reading a different book, so I wasn't really able to go back. I haven't really been able to go back to this book and expand on that too much. So but I think you are you are going to. I think it's going to lead to your TED Talk, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so this was really my first time using AI to expand the topics. Previously, I'd use it to kind of suggest ways to improve it, like, oh, what's a stronger word I can use here? or something like that. Whereas now I kind of moved from using that to kind of coming up with ways for me to take my previous writing and expand on it, which I think really was what led to a lot of the other stuff that I've done later with AI, which I will show you in a moment. Aditya, before you do that, can, can you just describe your your process from the standpoint of where, where you started your writing and then where you, you know, moved it like just literally the, the the mechanical steps you took where were you journaling originally uh so originally we had a google doc called our book thought journal okay. we, we what we would do is we would read a few uh, like a chapter or a few pages and then we would uh pick specific quotes that really stood out to us while we were reading and we put them in and then we kind of just start writing almost like rambling into the book uh, into the journal about what was making us think and then while we were thinking about that we ended up sparking other thoughts and that kind of just had like a domino effect where he kept coming up with new ideas and new ways to think about it. And then really what this was doing is just taking that process and kind of giving us almost a second person sitting right next to us who was kind of giving their own perspective on it. And that's, I think one way to view AI is uh, it's kind of like when we do like writing circles and things of this sort, obviously it doesn't replace that. There are still many opportunities for you to review your writing with your peers. And I think that's an important part of writing, but it kind of almost acts as an additional peer group to supplement that uh, and kind of help expand what you're thinking on. So we basically, we'd put it on the Google doc, we'd keep just writing and writing and writing like usually 200 so, or 300 words each time. Aditya, I, I, wanna, I, I wanna fill in some of the, um, some of the logistics uh, again. You had, you set up a, a group in now comment and yeah. you created a gpt discussion mm -hmm. space where you yeah. could ask questions you could paste your stuff um and then and then you use thinking partners to comment on that on, on what was there right yeah and the literal like steps of clicking buttons i guess that's what we did 
Yeah. But, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Bob, I, I don't know if you, I, I mentioned earlier that Aditya is presenting tomorrow. So he's, he's sort of in presenting mode. Um, I want to come back to Morgan for a second. Can you talk about, you, you read, um, go back in your process a little bit, because it wasn't, it was pretty similar in some ways, right? To what Aditya just said there. You were annotating the traffic jam piece from the 1619 magazine article. Uh, you want to describe that a little bit? So the process that Ms. Bentham had us go through was we were replying to everybody's comments um, to their annotations at first, and we were replying using AI. And at that point, I didn't really know what the thinking partners were, or what they are. So I was kind of just typing in my question or my statement, seeing what the AI wrote, like kind of cutting some things out and just commenting that. And then I realized a lot of them but were did, did you make your own comments too when you were reading? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Just I didn't know. Like we made our own and we also had to reply to like two or so other students. And that's where I was. I was like, oh, really reading it. I was like, this is how I can enhance my response. So when Ms. Bentham had us go back through and copy all of our annotations and put them into their own doc. And then we put those annotations into the um, AI thinking partners to help us um, create a writing based on that. That's how I used it. And that's how I made my traffic jam opinion piece. So at some point I you use the- Go. Yeah, but, oh, okay. Phone. That's fine. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for stopping in and sharing it with us. I appreciate of it. Of course. Okay, bye. Okay. See ya. Bob left it. No. no, it looks like Bob left it. Okay. DJ, we're losing us, but that's okay. We're we can we can still do you wanna do you wanna describe um here? I wanna break it up a little bit. I'm gonna do this. I wanna show you something else that um and Marina, can you be ready to read with me? Um, yes. Well, yes. Yeah. Oh, maybe we have more action here. <laughs> this is what happens. It's okay. Um, yeah, let's just figure this out first. Aditya, yeah, I have you ready to talk about the debate thing, right? That's what you want to yeah. debate work you've been doing? With, um, yeah. That's all good. Um, did that person manage to get here? So I was checking, don't want her to be left, lost. Siana, do you hear us or? Sorry. I'm here. Okay. Do you, can you find, oh, there you are. If you don't mind, um, you could turn your camera on and your mic on. Do you want to tell us, uh, are you also Ms. Bentham's student? Yes. And what band are you in? B band. B band. Okay. Oops, welcome, sorry. Welcome. No, C band. C band. <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome. Um, we're just sort of checking in with each other, talking about our work. Uh, you'll do. You, do you want to briefly say what you've been doing on uh, with AI and so forth? Um. So we just started, well, not just started, but we're like kind of closing off on the traffic jam in Atlanta. And we wrote an opinion piece like based off like the points that we touched on and annotated throughout the text. So the points I touched on was politics, um, urban planning, and generational um, racism being passed down throughout the generations. And I posted it in my youth voices with like a photo using like the text to um, photo AI. I used the AI to give me like a, like a, not a headline, but kind of give me a title that's more appealing and catches someone's eye. So they're like more tempted to read it. And then I used AI to try and like, like head point some of my like paragraphs just so you could understand, like get a small summary of what it's about. Wow, you did a lot then, because yeah, yeah. Because earlier you also made a profile of yourself and so forth for the, for the site and cool cool. Um, is it Sienna or Sienna? Sienna or Sienna? Um, it was right the first time. Sienna. Sienna. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. I I want to show you um just a a, a sense. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I shouldn't. I'm 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 torn right now. 
if I should do this. Now, let me let, let, me let um, let me let, so um, Aditya here is a, um, an eighth grader from New Jersey, and he's been using AI in very similar ways. And he's, he wants to show us how he's using it in his debate club. Yes? Do you, so you want to share a screen and do that? Sure. Uh, let's, yes. Thanks. So I, what I've done is I'm basically taking a discussion on now comment, and then I've converted it into a PDF. Uh, which makes it easy to print out if I need to, if like the Wi-Fi or something stops working where we're debating. So uh, what I've done is we have four arguments that we prepare for. Uh, so we have uh, four topics and then two arg and then each side we have to prepare pros and cons. Uh, so uh, I'm prepping a total of eight separate arguments. Now, did you uh, create the thinking partner for this one? So I've created some of the thinking partners. It's, 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 and okay. I'll show you how it is. So this is the, so first what I do is I run it through my first thinking partner. Let's take this one, uh, let's just find a good one. That's a good one, I mean, uh, yes. By the way, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little um, magnifying glass. If you click that, then you can enlarge the, um, what's in the screen and you can see. Uh, can you guys see me zooming in or is it we, We're okay. We're, yeah, that's good. You can zoom in too. We both can zoom in, but go ahead. So one of the arguments is that um, homeschooling is what is it? Homeschooling is better than traditional schooling. So it gave me five separate points, right? Uh, of these, one or two of the points are kind of similar or irrelevant. But the reason I picked five specifically is because we're supposed to present three to four. And that gives me like, if one of the arguments it produces is not good, that gives me like, I can kind of just merge it or get rid of it in my debate when I actually like go to debate and it kind of just gives me that extra. Uh, so I run it through the first thing partner, which takes the topic and then generates five uh, logic based arguments. But now it, it generates that. Wait, slow down a second. It generates that because you created a thinking partner that said make what, what yeah. did your thinking partner say? So I told the thinking partner generate a, uh, uh, generate a, a bulleted list of five different arguments uh, that, and I kind of told it to like talk like an eighth grader, but don't talk like, oh, use slang everywhere. I said, talk like an eighth grader in the sense of use eighth grade vocabulary, but talk as if addressing like a teacher or someone of respect. Because I don't want. Because you're going to be in a debate. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so it gave me five separate points personalized learning, uh, flexible scheduling improved academics, stronger family relationships, and a safer learning environment, right? Now, then Aditya, you... I want to I want to slow you down again. I want to I want to be a teacher in your session tomorrow who says to you, "But AI gave you all the answers. Why is that good? Shouldn't you have come up with those yourself?" See, the thing with these debates are is that we have to speak for 5 minutes each with three speakers and the thing is that contention, you can have an argument, but if you have nothing to support said argument, you have no logic, no stories, no personal anecdotes, no statistics, none of that stuff, then you're not going to win the debate because you're like saying, okay, this is, this is whatever I'm saying. Just take my word for it. That's so what did, what did AI, so AI did not give you all of that or it did? Or it, it gave us all of what we're doing is basically what we're doing. We're taking this and then what we can do is we can find examples, we can read news articles, and thing or go read books of the sort to figure out examples that we can use in our debates to back up this these points. So this, this is really just generating and kind of getting us thinking about what points we do. Obviously, we generate some of our own points on the side to kind of supplement these AI points because sometimes these points are not strong depending on the argument. But uh, it's kind of just helps us think, come up with ideas. So then what we do is I even took so uh, Mr. Allison, you had your uh, research partner. Uh, that mm -hmm. you that you had, so I kind which, of modified. Which I, which I will say um, was was created by a professor in the northwest of the United States. He put that out there and said, "Hey, this research partner, this this prompt seems to be working." Um, I copied it and made a thinking partner out of it, but and then you're using it, so that's sort of how these things get passed around. So worth worth noting. Go ahead. Yeah. I um, can I ask a question? Sure, sure, yeah, please. So my class is also working with Paul, 
and we were given like a list of 12 like thinking partners to use. So like, what is this concept of making your own like thinking partner? Like, I know that's not something we do. It might be a little more ahead, but like, how, how do you do that? Well, in the tab, there's a tab on the now comment site, which I can pull up a little later. You don't have to, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which has a tab called UPT thinking partners, which has all the thinking partners that Mr. Allison and other teachers have created. But in addition to that, you can even you can uh, even program your own thinking partners. So you can start out with telling it what to do and then figure out, OK, well, if I wanted to create arguments, but it's creating like a paragraph of arguments and I need a bulleted list of arguments, you can slowly start adding to the prompt and keep expanding on uh, on it until and uh, to get to get it to come up with uh, structured argue, like structured responses. Like for example, here, I, I know that's that exactly, every- That's exactly right. You said that really clearly. I, I want to check in, in with the Siana though. Did, did that make sense to you, how that might work? Yeah, that makes sense. I would say the one that I've really been using based off like the thinking partners is mm -hmm. the research one mm -hmm. and the one, um, I think it's digging more or something like something. Yeah, more, di like, something digging deeper that. or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot. Aditya, yeah. have you used that one? Uh, which one? Digging deeper? I don't think I have. I've mostly been programming okay. on my own. But you were about to talk about the research one right here. So yeah. go ahead. What I took is I looked in the research partner's prompt and I looked at the things that I liked from it. And then I also looked at things I didn't. For example, it kind of, there's some thing like it only has a response capped at like 150, 200 words, but I want something for every single argument. I don't want it to be So I removed those constraints and kind of said, told it, okay, give me a few arguments per, I think I've had some number in there. And so just, just to clarify, you went. You you use the one that is there already, the research partner that I borrowed from somebody else, right? And you and you didn't like necessarily everything it was asking for there. You wanted more, so you duplicated it and then made some changes. Yeah, then I did. You had, then you have your own debate research partner. Yeah. Perfect. So I basically took out the parts I didn't like, uh, and then I I for example I toned it down. I did. I wasn't exactly clear. How much? What kind of like vocabulary I would use? So I uh, kind of changed that to its eighth grade vocabulary, just like I did the other one. Uh, mm -hmm. And then so I basically took what I liked and uh, got rid of what I didn't like, and then I added in like kind of substitutes. Uh, and then what I also did is I think Rohan, I think, uh, created a fact checker, and I liked the idea of that. So I didn't like, his was, I think, kind of, the one I was looking at that I was able to see publicly was incredibly uh, specific. Like, it was just for, like, the congressional library. So I kind of created a basic one that, uh, that, um, I, uh, again, with artificial intelligence, you can't be 100% certain. Like, I think there's an example uh, in the doc, I have to find it where it gave me some random statistic, like converting, it was an argument about the metric system, I think, and it said converting to the metric system would cost us a ton of money or something. And they weren't, or like it would save us a ton of money or increase our GDP by so-and-so. I'll pull it up later, but it wasn't true. The statistics checker caught that. How, how, how did you know it was, wasn't true? Well, I first tried looking, it, it gave me some source, I think. And I tried looking for that specific source but I wasn't able to find it. Uh, it, was, it was in the first thing partner, not the research partner, and I wasn't able to find it. So I put it through the facts and statistics checker. It verified it false, and uh, and I was so, able to. Aditya, to work can, I, and I want to bring Marina in on this because she has she has her third graders using perplexity. Have you used perplexity at all for this? I've heard of it. I think it's another AI model. I've, uh, but I've yeah, never. Yeah. Marina, do you want to explain explain what they've been doing? Um, yeah, so it's it is another AI model that you can use. It actually um, will... what's nice about it is that you don't have to log in, right? You can no, just use it. You don't have right. to log in, you can just like hop on, you can share the link of the conversation and hold on to it that way. So you can preserve it that way. Um 
and you prompt it just like you do with other AIs um, about something that you might want to learn more about. So my students right now are in the midst of research for biography. Um, they're writing biographies, so they're researching individuals that have shown perseverance to overcome challenges and barriers that um, to help them achieve like their the goals that they want for themselves. And um, what's really cool about that is after you prompt it, you get a list of five resources that it used from the internet to generate the information that it's providing you with. And that's great because you can vet immediately what is being used and you can actually remove the sources. So example, like we took out blogs, we took out commercial websites that came up. Um, Mm -hmm. We took out Wikipedia. Um, And it was good because it was also doing some media literacy work, right? To say like, is this even credible information that I should be used? Like we took out all YouTube videos that were coming up as resources. And then once you remove the resources that are not the ones that you deem as credible, it will regenerate the response. Um, So that's not including any of that information. So I really like that because I think not only- You just cross out the resources across the top? The ones you don't want you just click. You just click the ones that you don't want anymore and you say remove it. And once you remove it, it regenerates the response. So I think- the resources that are left. Aditya, you've been really clear on how you use AI, in particular the now comment AI, but other AI places too, for logic, for getting your arguments together. But you use, but you like go on Google to search for facts. Is that fair? Yeah. That, Occasionally, yeah. like once you have gone to the library, but <laughs> use, there isn't like a lot of our. That's nice. That's good like, to hear. People will be happy. <laughs> yeah, I go to the Sorry. library a lot actually because like it's right next to my friend's house. I was there okay. this weekend. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think so, occasionally. I think, yeah, but so perplexity is a really great tool for debate because because of some of the things uh, Ms. Lombardo was was talking about there. Yeah, I and think. And hope, hopefully she'll come back. Oh, she's just. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Yeah, yeah, please. So I, I heard and I was Sienna, like, Sienna, interrupting us is exactly what you should be doing. Um, I noticed that you were saying that you have your third graders doing it for a biography. So, like, how do you know when they're not taking it too far and it's like out of their hands, out of their words? Like, how, like, how are you able to tell like this isn't them, like, or like they're like using it to a point where it's like they're not adding their own input or their own opinion or their own piece from it? Oh, so that's a great question. They're not actually using it to generate their writing. They're using it for research. And because of exact, like exactly what you said, it, it wouldn't matter if it was a Google search or a book or the use of an artificial intelligence like model. Um, teaching students and people of any age just like how to paraphrase and take information and then articulate it back in your own words i think again is another critical skill um so we're actually using stra- uh, structures that support that work we're like okay well you've got all this information it's already written into sentences it's already sort of organized it doesn't matter if it's coming from ai or a book that they might be reading how do you begin to extract key information that matches the topic that you're really writing about, which is about the obstacle that they may have had to overcome or the achievement that they finally were able to earn? Um, so what I've actually done, even, even actually just today, was how do you start to sort that, start sorting out that information? and putting it into keywords and phrases. And then once it's broken down out of keywords and phrases, then we, then they recompose. Hmm. Um, And that's actually connected to some of the writing structures that I'm working with my students on to help them write um, in a way that they effectively are communicating and um, are also showing relationships between ideas. But I, I think that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that because I did yeah, catch it, a couple. <laughs> that 
copied right out. And that's why they I they sent me their links and I was able to, you know, say and, and we talked we've we talked about um you know, just, I, and I guess it's a big question, right? Like, is it plagiarism if you're copying it right off of an AI model? We should, um, we should turn, turn, let's turn the question back to Siana, if that's okay. How do you yeah. deal with that yourself when you're dealing with AI? How do you keep your uh, voice in there? How do you, yeah. I would say a lot of times that I'm using AI is probably for history. So, um after like you know i graduate this year i plan on going to college and i am doing a political science major so a lot of times in my writing like sometimes i have a hard time starting off because I, when i'm thinking i get in my groove and i think of too much and i add too much a lot of times a lot of times i overwrite or i over say so a lot of times i use it to give me that hook or like to give me like a thesis statement, like to help me like knock it off so I can keep it very broad. So then I can start adding my ideas. I feel like a lot of times I struggle with thesis and hooks because I just have so many ideas. It's like, well, I can't just fit this in one sentence. Like, and a lot of times my um, teachers, they want it to be one sentence and you can just jump off from the rest of it and just connect everything, your examples, all of your resources back to that thesis. But like, a lot of times I struggle with it because I just don't know how to like make it one. So that's still times I use it. So like, say it's about writing something about, um, what was it? It was my college essay and it was something about like something you overcame. So like, mm -hmm. I just wrote about, you know, because I used to think, um, go through anxiety and depression. So I made it based off of that, but I put my own experience in there so that I can limit it. So it wouldn't really be just based off depression and anxiety. Cool, cool. Those are great examples. Thank you. Aditya, do you have a thought on that? I was kind of first, first thing about the sources. I think also Bing Chat does that. Bing, mm -hmm. but you have to sign it's, in. It's, it's very similar. Yep. Yeah, but yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I think in terms of preserving your own voice, what I like, what I showed you originally with the hundred word, I felt like if now when I reflect on that piece, I feel like my voice kind of just wasn't shown in that piece as much as I would have liked it to after the AI edits. So I think the best way to do that is I've started to move away from a, okay, how can I replace specific lines? Like what are my weakest lines to um, how, especially since I've been going from more, of these personal experience stories to more like uh, stories about events and other things that are happening in the world right now, less personal stories. I find it easier to, instead of ask for specific lines, ask for, okay, how can I take this? And then how can I, what do you say? Uh, what ideas can I put into this? How can I expand this? What ideas do you think like, for example, I wrote a piece about the rise of like YouTube and independent creators and uh, things like that uh, and the rise of social media. And one thing it I didn't mention, which is a key, whole, a key part that I was missing in the piece was these challenges that independent creators face, which uh, looking back was probably something that I should have added um, early on. But then AI kind of picked up on that and, real, and told me, okay, add something about the adversities that they've had to overcome to get to the points where they are in their careers. And I added that and I think it made the peach so much better in the end. Cool, cool. Um, I will have to agree with that because sometimes when I am using AI, it makes me think of things that I don't think about initially or stuff that's like might have actually like make me stand out or like, you know, um, think outside of the box and not be so limited and like concerned on one thing so I can touch on other bases to make my writing more like flow. Aditya, did you want to say more about what's on the screen? Because then I, I do want to try to share something. As well. Yeah. Uh, so after we I verify which facts are false, true or false, I have that, I created last time a, a, a partner to kind of create counter arguments, points of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it does, it for Which, each do you remember uh, Alana Winnick told you to do that, right? Yeah, I think I did it like right before, but I didn't get a time to implement it in time because of what happened okay. after. But uh, yeah. yeah, I kind of 
modified it slightly because mm -hmm. to kind of interface with the the above thinking partner kind of verifies what's true and what's false. So I modified it to say I, I you see in the prompt if if they uh, if facts have been proven false, use that as a POI like oh uh, judge this is not true information this is actually the correct information. Uh, but if it, if the sometimes the statistic partner is unable to verify this, mm -hmm. uh, so I tell it, uh, okay, if if it's unverifiable or if or if it's been proven true, then treat it like it's true and create uh, points of interest to kind of counteract that. So first off, point out to the judge when these AI generated arguments are a mistake that'll help me me personally and also make, keeps me from slipping up. Like if I accidentally mentioned a false statistic that wasn't caught. I mean, that, uh, that was caught, but it didn't get a chance to look at. It kind of catches me as I'm looking over the POI spray chart. Uh, and then it also kind of helps me generate my counter arguments, especially since me and my friend, um, especially since I'm in a position where I have to do a, a, quite a bit of refuting because uh, we, we do like a three person parliamentary style. First person introduces the topics. Second person kind of expands on the topics, maybe adds one or two additional contentions, and then also refutes. And then third person to just fully refute. refute. So I personally okay. do second speaker because I do like to introduce points and backup points, but I also do enjoy refuting. Those are like, it's kind of just like a best of both worlds, kind of. Okay. And that kind of plays a role into how I do this, where I ask it to generate POIs and counter arguments, but I also ask it to generate contentions. And I feel like. Has has anybody else on your debate team started using this too, or it's just? I you? think I noticed. I don't know if they're on the debate team. On my debate team, uh, there's an you 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 published this the the, the first thinking partner, the uh, the uh, the right. debate exchange partner, which was done at the time. I think yeah. you published another one, right? I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, like the uh, Ananya strong debate partner thing, which honestly, when I was looking at the prompt, seemed a little more complicated than mine. Because it like <laughs> involved like just comparing the the size of it and like it asked it to cr almost create personalities and blend them, which those are, those, compli those complications don't necessarily give you better results. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, but uh, sometimes it, 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 you, it, it depends. You test it. Yeah, it kind of blends three three personalities when I was looking at it. Uh, individual per, uh, like a person. A debate judge and a senator, but the senator personality—that that one wasn't yours. I thought that was that yours. one's. Oh. That one's. Is she from Lands? I think she is, right? I don't Nanya. know. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, except that for for example, for an argument like this, for the for an argument about like national bands, like the cloning one, very useful. For an argument like this one, which is about which one's better, and there isn't as much government involved. As like you're not passing laws or something about this, depending on the resolution, then it would be I feel less useful in this kind of scenario. So let me let me just point out that the the kind of meta thinking and what meta thinking is is thinking about your thinking, right? The kind of meta thinking you're doing when you create a thinking partner or decide, I think that thinking partner would be good for this situation, or I need to create a different thinking partner for that situation. That 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 kind of thinking is really amazing. Um, okay, um, great, great. Thanks for stopping in, Sienna. Sienna, I will um, see. Can uh, should we close off, or can I show you one more thing? <laughs> Let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. Are can you hang out for another five minutes? Sure. Are you with us? Okay. And Sienna, if you're with us to. Yeah, quick, quick five minutes. Um, so we are working with 11th graders. Am I showing Jaden here? Everyone see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will well, actually, um, Aditya, do you mind being um, the AI in this case? Uh, sure. Okay. So this was a very, very quick introduction to these 11th graders about how, how AI works. We created a GPT discussion space for them, and then we asked them to go in and just do one thing. Just write about one thing you did that makes you feel good about yourself, right? Um, you'll recognize that. 
But um, as I use it all the time, all over the place. So um, Jaden wrote something that makes me feel good about myself. Something that makes me feel good about myself is is the work ethic I produce. Right. A couple of days later, we asked him to do the same <laughs> prompt. Right. So as you can imagine, a young person says, "One thing I did this morning was take a nice, long, refreshing shower before coming to school." Right. <laughs> Leave me alone. I did your assignment. <laughs> right, but can you read what the inquiring youth wrote back to him? All right, so you can start your day with a shower, huh? That's cool. But like, why did you choose to start uh, start your writing with this detail? Is it symbolic or what? A shower can mean a whole bunch of things, like new beginnings, cleansings, or just a straightforward part of a daily routine. In your text, you say one thing I did this morning was take a nice, uh, long, refreshing shower before coming to school. So is there something about this particular morning that set the stage for your day? How did that shower influence your mood, your interactions, or your perspectives when you got to school? Showers are pretty mundane, but the way you're talking about it makes me feel anything but. Moving on, let's dive a little deeper. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's fine. Um, that is... How do you feel? How, yeah, how do you feel about How would you feel about that if you got that answer? <laughs> um... Oh, I just feel a little confused because really? uh, it's a little, it's, it's a shower. It's not that complicated. <laughs> I just took a shower. There's not some symbolic meaning behind it. I just took a shower. Well, go I on guess, to the move, moving on a little deeper then. Go ahead. Read that too. Uh, okay. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, moving on. Let's talk a little bit. Let's dive a little deeper. You mentioned the shower was nice, long, and refreshing. Each of those adjectives can unpack a stash of vibes without uh, <laughs> about your morning. Was it nice because you felt at peace? Or maybe you had some killer tunes playing and long. Does that imply you were stalling, dreading the day ahead, or just savoring a moment of solitude? And there's refreshing, which could mean you hit the reset button on something. You've thrown out this everyday action, but the way you describe it, you're hinting at it's like you're hinting at something more. Can you like elaborate on the on on the emotional or mental state? <laughs> Okay, behind choosing less specific words. Okay. Finally, your showers. You're saying, it, you're saying it's too much, but I kind of feel like it, I think it, does, it gets is, in his face, right? But if a teacher got in his face and said that kind of stuff, it'd be just like, go away. I don't want, but AI doing it, I think, makes it into a game of sorts. Is that making any think, sense? Or what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing is that I've noticed AI is kind of almost showing two paths, like a positive and a negative. Like we can hop right into the example of uh, uh, long. Does that imply you were stalling, threading the day ahead? Right. Savoring right. a moment of solitude. Like I think that is a completely different perspective from what I thought. Uh, mm -hmm. When I said my nice, refreshing, those kind of words have a more positive connotation compared mm -hmm. to like uh, dread. And I, when I first thought of it, I was like, Oh, yeah, uh, a nice shower to start your day. Because, I mean, I like showers. Nice, long showers, hot showers. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Marina, um, what do you think about this? Whoop. I'm going to stop sharing. So, oh, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. So, but I heard that you said you had a prompt. Um, oh, okay, never mind. It's okay, it's okay. You weren't, yeah, yeah. I, I, we, you can, you can watch it on the videotape. It's, it's cool. Well, no, I, I heard, did, I heard what you said. Oh, you heard and what it's like kind of how, uh, one thing that you feel good about, when, yeah. right? So that's kind of how we always started the other, the sessions for Zoom. Um, yeah. So I, I just kind of impressed that AI, even, even something simple like I just took a shower. I, mean, I picked one that was. There are other ones that I, or too personal that I didn't want to pick. But even though it, it it took something very simple like that and tried to make it meaningful, and and that feels interesting to me, that AI can do that. I think but, it's thinking about an ordinary part of our daily routines, really deep, and it kind of, I don't know, it's very interesting. Oh. But I just don't really know how I feel. On one hand, I mean, when you first read it, it looks ridiculous. But on the other hand, it kind of, when you kind of look into it, and I, I think especially the part where I think 
that is interesting is the part I mentioned earlier about the, uh, is it a good thing? Is it a nice start to your day? Or is it a bad thing? And kind of mentioning, like, I think artificial intelligence kind of bring in new perspectives that mm-hmm. you would have never thought about before. Like, I never would have thought about the shower and the long, uh, longness, the length of the shower being not a good yeah. thing, not like you enjoy showers, but a way to kind of almost delay yeah. the inevitable. So it's all an experiment. We're kind of seeing what happens. Um, and eventually we hope they'll start choosing thinking partners that they want for their journal entries and then building their own. But yeah, so we're going to be thinking about that. Yeah, building your own thinking partner. So good, good luck tomorrow with your presentation. You have so, I just want to warn you, you have so much. You could give just your first points and... <laughs> Those teachers are going to be like, wow, I need to think about this. So it's okay. Don't overwhelm them is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just figuring out the best way. I think first thing is I kind of want to figure out which one's redundant. Like I feel like it's having – I want to – It's tomorrow. Don't worry about it so much. Just, just, yeah. But just, I can't wait. Just I'm really listen, excited. To, listen to what they're saying and go with their flow. Yeah. You know? To, yeah, yeah, if they're if they're all like really into the writing partners, I might present both. And I have some coaches sitting with me, you know. And it's my, it's but, not debate class, right? It's not debate. Yeah. So yeah. you know, let them make their points. You don't have to argue back to them. All right, I can't wait to hear what you do. Um, and yeah. we'll check in with you next week or next time or sometime soon. Marina, thanks for stopping by. Um, and I don't know if you meant to go away or <laughs> you just went away. Um, we'll talk to you soon. All right. See you next week or sometime again soon. Good night. Paul? Yes, you. yes. Who's um, here? Can you make sure you um, t- um, put a word into Ms. Bentoon? Because the way you were that here. Was, yeah. And I can't, I didn't write in the chat because I was talking. I got you. I'll, okay. I'll let her know. Yep. Uh, okay. No, thank you. No problem. Sure, sure. Bye. Talk to you soon. Good day. See, see you next week or if earlier than that something happens bye okay <laughs>